Good morning and welcome to NBS Special Talk Show. And today I am joined, and I'm joined today, we're going to talk about something very important and the people who are very important in our lives. If you exist and in the real world and you speak, you know teachers are very important. And today I'm joined by Ugandan National Teachers Union, that is UNATU. Yes, I uh, got that right. And we're, we're going to reflect on how World, uh, World Teachers Day is and the theme that is uh, valuing teachers' voices towards a new, a new social contract, a new social contract for education. And I'm not seated alone today. I'm joined with three amazing, powerful people. And I'll start by introducing Madame Carol Kavuma, lecturer at Chambogo University Institute's Academic Register at UNITE. Say hello to the people. Wow, thank you so much, uh, moderator. My name is Caroline Kavma, as already said. I am start substantively a lecturer of Chambogo University, but loaned out mm. as a shared resource to the Uganda National Institute for Teacher Education. <laughs> yeah, we have a few resources like me, so I am shared out to support <laughs> the establishment of the Uganda National Institute for Teacher Education and designated happily as the Institute Academic Registrar to come. I greet you all, and it's a pleasure being here with you. And uh, next to Carol is uh, Fobal Baguma, uh, General Secretary of UNATO. Say hello to the people watching. Yes, uh, good morning, viewers. I am Baguma Firubat Bates, the General Secretary of Uganda National Teachers Union. And uh, I'm happy to be here with the big sisters to deliver the message about World Teachers Day. And whoever can read and write mm. should say thank you to my teacher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't say that a lot, actually. <laughs> 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 and uh, the last one, but not least, uh, Dr. Annette Kajura Mogisha, uh, Assistant Commissioner, TETD -T -T of the Ministry of Education and Sports. Mm. Say hello to the people. Good morning, viewers, and um, we are happy to be here. Mm. And most importantly, to be here because a certain teacher did some job in us. Mm. And I know that most of you who are listening to us, you also had a teacher that made you understand English because mm. you, in Uganda, English is not our mother tongue. Mm. You started <laughs> with another language, but mm. the teacher came mm. into your life and helped you to understand English. I'm happy to be here. Mm talk about issues that relate to a teacher. Yeah. I work with the Ministry of Education, as you have said, as Assistant Commissioner in charge of teacher education training. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm in the department called Teacher Education Training and Development. Oh, that's the T. -E -T. I'm happy to be here. Because <laughs> <laughs> I kept on wondering what the T. -E -T. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Okay, yeah. Interesting. So, um, Tomorrow, the 5th of October, we celebrate uh, World Teachers' Day. What does that mean to you? Let me start with uh, Carol. Wow. Mm. Yeah, celebrating a Teachers' Day is celebrating life, is celebrating mm. profession, is celebrating mm. work, mm. is celebrating all other vocations because mm. we are and we give birth to many other professions. The teachers stand out above all other professions because... Uh, we give in all to show people the way mm. and to lead them to where you are, like you here. Mm. Your teacher gave it all and doesn't even mind mm. how great you become, but the teacher gets much, much better. Mm. So we are celebrating that person, the only one person mm. who reduces for you to mm. excel. Yeah. The teacher comes down and gives way for you to be exalted. So I can come down, but I want my learners to go. And there are many sayings where we find that the doctor will want you to fall sick for mm -hmm. them to treat. Uh, the other people will want you to, somebody who is selling things, will take your money. Mm -hmm. The teacher will lose sleep over your failure mm -hmm. and wants you to, 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 to come, to be, mm -hmm. to become, to get into what God has made you. And this is the only one person, one profession that dies mm. and burns out for the rest to give light. Right. So we are celebrating that. Mm. So, yes. uh, Mr. Baguma, uh, I want to ask you the same question. What does uh, World uh, Teachers Day mean to you? Because you're General Secretary of uh, the Uganda uh, Teachers Union. Yeah, thank you very much 
first of all, um, World Teachers Day is a day when we celebrate the contribution of teachers in nation building. Um, as teachers, like you know, that we have a slogan which is our motto mm. because we are the nation is. Simple meaning um, whoever can read and write. Those who have made it possible for us to sit here yes. is because of the teacher. And we agreed that uh, a week in which World Teachers Day falls should be appreciate my teacher week. It is never <laughs> too late. In the case you have not called your teacher who made you what you are, you can still call because we still have today and tomorrow. And I, <laughs> the <challenges> there are many, <laughs> there are many yeah. but uh, it does not necessarily mean that you have to call all of them mm. because you may not have even the contacts of all, mm. but at least show that <laughs> spirit mm. of appreciating those who made you what you are. And therefore, on World Teachers Day, we look at the contributions mm. the teachers make. We take account of what the teachers go through to make it happen for all others. You are aware that um, the teaching profession is the mother of all professions. Therefore, for any development to take place, the teachers must be <coughs> at the center stage. And therefore, no country can be better than the education system of that country. And no education system can be better than the quality of the teachers. And this is the person we are talking about. And therefore, the, the status of the teacher needs to be given special attention because of the special contribution they make. Teachers never sleep because even after time, mm. official time, you have to continue preparing for tomorrow for another day and so on. Uh, and therefore, that's why they say you are like a candle, which burns itself to, pro to provide light for others, but while it is providing light, it is wearing out. And that is the teacher. And therefore, <coughs> much attention should be uh, put on the teacher yeah. to make life better, because without the teacher, we wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be hosting us. Not true. Um, yes. Going to the ministry, uh, Dr. Annette, um, how does this relate, uh, since you're coming from the government side, World Teachers Day? Thank you very much. I want to first of all step in uh, from where my colleagues have stopped. Mm. I want to say that uh, as for me, I look at the teacher as a creator. Why? When you look at all the things we are doing, when you come and you have not done anything, one will say, but who was your teacher really? <laughs> you see how he behaves. <laughs> you wonder how his teacher was. And even if we left this teacher that we are talking about, the registered teacher, even your mom is a teacher, your parent is a teacher, your brother, all the people around you are teachers. And if you recall, all the things that people talk about in the community, uh, whether it is on a barrier, whether it is on a graduation, a wedding, mm -hmm. the things they talk about you are the things that you were taught. Mm -hmm. Meaning that everybody's life is made by who has been his creator. They will say, you know, that this young man is very good. He will never pass by you without greeting you. Yes. Who taught? Who, how did he get this greeting? He must greeting. He must have learned it from someone. He will. You can't give him even if it is very small. He will thank you. If he passes, he will stop and talk talk to you. How are you? Are you okay? Oh, that's great. And all those things are from the teacher. But if you see this person, whether you are dressed very well and you just pass people, you don't greet them, you don't have no sorry, you have the words are so cruel, they are all not from a teacher. So that's why for me, 
I first think that a teacher is a creator. He mm. makes you to be that person that fits in a community. And as a ministry, there is no minister if there is no a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> there is no PS, there is no commissioner. So mm. we can't be there if we don't have teachers. Yes. And therefore they play a big role in our lives. Mm. They make us, and uh, it's like how the musician said, mm. from your pain, I have gotten the name of being a father. Mm. And from many things maybe which they don't see are right, mm. we have the names of being called a commissioner, yeah. being called a PS, being called a head teacher. Mm. We all become because they are. Mm. And like he has said, if you want the country to grow, you must be prepared to invest in the teacher. Yeah. Because all the economic growth will depend on education. Education can't be there without the teacher. Yeah. So <coughs> what a great person we have mm. and we are here to talk about. All right. Uh, I'll go to uh, Mr. Baguma. Um, according to UNESCO reports that 44 million additional teachers are needed uh, globally by 2030 to actually bridge the gap. Uh, so what does this speak to you? That less teachers are actually coming in, less people are actually going into the education sector. Yes, um, while we are talking about the shortage of teachers, of recent you had reports that so many teachers are applying for early retirement. Mm -hmm. that, that means even the figures that we are quoted <laughs> might be higher <laughs> in the times to come. Uh, and um, why are the teachers leaving the profession mm. or why do we have shortage of teachers one the, the profession itself is not attractive mm. in terms of welfare the, <laughs> the living and working conditions of the teacher are wanting and that makes it very difficult mm. now to convince the young ones who are in school to become teachers because they are seeing the status of the teacher. Two, in the current times of our country, Uganda, the, the teachers were divided into science and the arts. Now, that has never been the case since independence. And this has brought a lot of confusion at the workplace. So it is the most hostile place you can go to because the teachers uh, don't easily relate. They don't talk <laughs> together. Sciences. One group is happy, <laughs> another group is uh, uh, highly demotivated. And um, so when we talk of numbers of teachers in this country, it is going to be worse if the government does not rectify this situation because Unfortunately, even those who were enhanced are leaving the profession because they are saying, I, I better grab this be before it is maybe taken or stopped. And they are also leaving. Then the other side, they are very demotivated. Their morale is very low. And they are saying enough is enough. Let me quit. Meanwhile, those who are still in school cannot think of going there because they don't see light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, and therefore, where does this leave the, the, the innocent learner? The innocent learner is the one, of course, who will suffer at the end of the day. So we need to address the teacher welfare, the living and working conditions of the teacher, so that we support the innocent learner who needs quality education. And education is a public good. It is not a product like any other you can go to the market and pick. And therefore, the earlier government rectified what it caused, the better. All right. 
Uh, Carol, I'll go with you the same question. Yeah. Why are people, why are teachers leaving? Because you see the numbers. They say by the time <laughs> this, this was quoted, it was 44. And then by the time maybe we we'll return next year, it would have increased. Why do you uh, think this is so from your perspective? As I, from my perspective, mm. uh, from all, mm. uh, from all, all of old, eh? mm. uh, teachers have always been leaving when they get better opportunities. Mm. Just like it is with other professions. Mm. When um, you get a higher paying job or a better working condition, mm. people tend to leave certain organizations to go to others. Mm. Uh, the issue, I would take it right from the very beginning when teachers were being made or when they decided to come. Mm. When I joined the teaching, uh, I joined like a person who is going to a marriage. Mm. You decided to go and you say, Nienze kufomba. And for us, when we joined the teaching, we said, we have gone to teach and educate. And uh, every other time, uh, despite the little pay, we have <coughs> discovered that there are many gains mm. that you get out of teaching. We've discovered that we, we were made to teach. And uh, while many people were calling us, you know, Caroline, why don't you leave? Come and do this. Uh, deep in my heart, I had wanted to do law, but somehow my father, decided for me and I, I, I looked at it and saw that yes, after teaching for a while, I thought that yes, I was meant to teach because the people I teach are doing well. Mm. And uh, the people I teach are not failures in life. I'm not responsible for many failures in life. So I decided to settle mm. down, but now the teachers have not settled down. The teachers stayed, they were not made real teachers in the heart. So it has something to do with the training itself and it's to do with the choices they made. Because when you, you marry and you find difficulties in a marriage, are you going to undo it and go, all you solve the problems out there in this. So there is something to do with me as a teacher and it's something to do with my interests. Whether I came in, you know, we were trained and we were told that the moment you lose interest in teaching, resign. So maybe they are also quitting because they lost interest, they no longer see. But then there are also other, the, the first factor is on the teacher herself or himself. The other one is that, uh, as the, uh, Mr. Baguma has said, the working conditions really are driving people crazy, especially when you are not so innovative. It's very easy for you to quit because the working conditions are becoming harder and harder. When I was a young child, I used to take many things from home to my teacher. The parents have become very hostile. They are more abusive than supportive. <laughs> so the systems are not supportive. They are more critical. They are criticizing the teacher, and the teacher feels that I'm giving my most, but the society is very hostile and unappreciative. So in that factor, as he's saying, I appreciate my teacher is an important thing. It, when somebody says thank you, even when they've not given you anything, you feel humbled, you feel you've contributed. But teachers are receiving more insults than appreciation. And at any time, even if it's an employee in any company, every time they feel they are not being appreciated by the society they are serving, mm. they get burnout. So one mm. of the things is burnout, and then they quit. Mm. So that is another factor about the support systems that are not helping the teacher so much. And then there is a also the issue of um, stress. Uh, he said that we don't sleep, <laughs> and that is true. For me, I sleep at around, let me see, sometimes I sleep at midnight, but at three I am up. Mm -hmm. To be able to, to prepare, but also to be able, because teachers don't only really teach, but we do a lot of things for this country. And uh, usually the comments we receive are normally attacking education, but people don't really know what we go through as we are trying to sustain the system to be productive in whatever way it is. So there is stress around us that we do a lot of work. Paperwork, a lot of brain drain. You know, you feel you are being uh, drained for you to prepare for the forthcoming activities of the state and many others. Then there is workload. The teacher is the only one person that will always work in the day, but also a big portion of our personal time is taken because we have to, uh, to prepare for tomorrow and you have to assess. Assessment is usually completed when you are in your either house or later 
you can take a big portion of your time trying to look at what the students wrote, what the children wrote, and then you are planning against what you've assessed it to plan for tomorrow. So we buy it much into the time we would be using for rearing goats, mm. as at one time Musei told us. We use so much time in, in the time we'd be using to invest in the resources, we are still spending it because the real working time is eight hours from eight to around five. But then later from six onwards, you may travel home at eight o'clock up to around midnight. You are planning and you're also trying to assess and uh, do research and other things. So there is a bit of stress and overload and uh, a lot of... Uh, sentiments of being unappreciated despite the much you are sacrificing. Mm -hmm. So those things can really work on your psyche. Mm -hmm. And if you are not a very steady person, you'll say, well, let me quit. But I, I am not one of them, mm, you're still, fortunately. You're still I am strong. a steady one. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's also gradually quitting. Oh. She has told you she's an academic registrar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so does the academic <laughs> registrar teach? I am going to, be, I'm going to be one of the first ones to teach. Yeah. I am going to remain teaching <laughs> at whatever post. Yes. All right. Um, <laughs> going to the I have to teach. <laughs> going to Dr. Alex. <laughs> What are those policies to help uplift? Because you've had uh, all the different reasons why most teachers are retiring early or why people are actually not inspired to become teachers. Do we have like policies uh, in place to uplift? Yes, the policies are in place. And I want to uh, inform you that the sort of Bible that is guiding teaching today mm. is called National Teacher Policy. Okay. And it comes with a number of things that we are focusing on uplifting the, 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 the state or the space in which the teacher is. But um, like we usually say that when you are looking at the children's rights, mm -hmm. you also must look at their responsibilities. Now, as the policy comes in to support the teacher, it's also very important that teacher understands that is this policy standing in for me? Mm. <laughs> because sometimes before you understand what you, you have been told, somebody is trying to confuse you and you need time to study it and understand mm. it. But we have the national teacher policy that comes in to make the ground leveled for the teachers. Mm. Previously, we have been having different levels of teachers starting from the pre-primary, you go to primary, secondary, tertiary, universities. And we were, even ourselves as teachers in our family, we have been pointing at each, at each other. You can say, now what do you say, you, Carol, who is a pre-primary teacher, without looking at each other, to know that we all have a contribution in making sure that the building called teaching is very strong at whatever level you are. So the policy comes in to level it so that when you are training, you all start as undergraduates, whether you're going to be a secondary teacher, whether you're going to be a pre-primary teacher or primary. Mm -hmm. We all graduate with degree. Mm -hmm. She's pre-primary, he's secondary, I'm primary, and you are secondary, and we are all graduates. Mm -hmm. So that means that will be a level ground. We shall no longer point at teachers saying, don't say anything because you are I'm in the pre-primary. <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> so that is one. And uh, the other thing is um, uh, the curriculum that we have introduced in lower secondary, uh, in lower secondary, aims at producing a strong person that is going to enter the teacher training. We want to think that by the time the child finishes senior four, has a number of skills that he can be able to manifest him. And that's why the National Teacher Policy says they are, it is aiming at producing a skilled teacher mm -hmm. that is able to compete globally. Mm -hmm. Now, if you receive somebody who has a number of skills from uh, senior four, and which we are gradually entering A level, mm -hmm. then we will be able to start teacher education when you have a strong person. We are also going to have a National Teacher Council. It is the only <coughs> teaching profession that has not been having a council that will be defending a teacher. 
you, you see, you cannot just touch a, a medical officer because there is that medical council mm -hmm. will stand in to fight or explain to the public what a medical officer is and why he or she should be supported. When you go to law, you, you know you have a law development center that yeah. gives people a strength to stand in law and do what the public uh, would be um, expecting and the rest of the profession. So we are going to have that teacher council mm. and that's why we call upon all the people responsible to support us so that even as teachers, we have somebody to stand for us and solve the issues of the teaching profession. All right. Uh, we also are uh, strengthening CPD mm. and which is in full is mm. continuous professional development. Okay that touches in strengthening a teacher. You know, one of the things that makes you hate your job mm. is knowing that tomorrow has come and you are going to uh, present a program which you don't, you, you feel you are not uh, empowered. Mm. You, you don't have strength to lead that program. But um, you are coming in to support teachers mm. with short courses because we know by the time you graduate, you are not strong enough to do all it calls for one to produce a child or to go and do a good lesson. But these uh, courses will be supporting the teachers to empower them so that they enjoy the teaching. So uh, may I think as we do that, we are empowering the teacher to feel himself or herself and position himself very well. All right. Um, Mr. Baguma. Yes. Do you believe in, in the policy, first of all? <laughs> <laughs> the, the policy, the, the policy. You, you, you mentioned a lot about that division of uh, science teachers, which I actually saw when I was actually still in school. Policy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the national teacher policy has no problem, mm -hmm. but you know we are well known for having very good policies mm -hmm and shelving them. And there are some neighboring countries which have learned the way to utilize the resources in <laughs> Uganda. <laughs> so they just come, pick our policies, go and implement, and things move. So if the policy is implemented as it is, it has good intentions, and it would uh, professionalize the teaching profession, it would standardize the mm. teaching profession. And at the end of the day, teachers would see hope um, in their profession. Mm. So the, the, the only call is to make sure that government puts a budget to implement the national teacher policy as it is because if it is not implemented, then it will be the same story, the same song in our country. Yeah. And uh, the, the challenges we are talking about and the others will remain as long as the, there is no strategy to address them. Because, of course, teachers are living in the same country. You see, while we are here, when we live here, we go to the same market. We go to the same supermarkets. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, we are living in the same, almost the same environment. Yes, some could be living in the high end, but who, wherever you are living, you are under the same economy. Uh, and therefore, when you find there are those variations, mm -hmm. true, as a teacher, you have a calling, but you remain a human being. Uh, and therefore, when you see people eating and you are hungry, <laughs> you, you, your, your inner heart does not tell you that since you are a teacher, you, for you, you should, uh, you, you should keep on praying because that is what you are meant to do. Uh, and therefore, um, looking at the teacher and what the teacher goes through in terms of work, because there is no teacher who finishes the teaching and goes home and starts from where he or she stopped the next day. That is not there. You must, first of all, prepare. 
you must carry the books. Look at a teacher who is teaching 300 learners. And these are lower classes. What do you expect of this teacher? You are one class, one teacher. A school has eight teachers, including head teacher and deputy. Now, if there are five women and three of them deliver and go for maternity leave, what does this head of the institution do to run the school with the enrollment? And therefore, there is a need for government to invest in education if we have to turn around and have the teachers enjoy their profession like any other professionals. And you know, the teacher's conditions are learners' conditions. Mm. The moment you have the motivated teachers, mm. don't think that you will get motivated results. Mm. A, a teacher who is hungry and angry cannot produce <laughs> better results, um, which we expect. Yes. And therefore, when we talk about these things, we are looking at the reality. And the reality is, the conditions of teachers. Teachers are, uh, are the ones who get uh, the least pay, but they, they will tell you that the salary of the teacher, the 460,000 is consolidated. No transport allowance, no lunch allowance, no accommodation allowance, no standing allowance, because if others get sitting allowance, then the teacher should also get a standing allowance. Now, all those are in the 400, in the 460,000. Now, how do you expect this teacher to turn around, look after the family, also take the children to school, and then you find him or her happily living? So, in God's sake, we need to look at the pride of the teacher. Look back. If there were no teachers, I think we would be in a different world, living differently. But even those who sit in the boardrooms and say, ah, no, the teachers are very many. They are very many, but are they doing nothing? If they are very many, reduce them, but motivate them to do their work. And therefore, when we look at the theme of this year's World Teachers Day, valuing teacher voices. Mm. The moment you ignore teacher voices, then that means you have ignored education. Because in education, we have different stakeholders. Different stakeholders must play their roles. Our obligations, our responsibilities, our rights are different. But they must be upheld they must be respected, and then we promote them. And then the, we shall find learners who are very happy in school, enjoying the teaching learning process. They will be in friendly environments. And at the end of the day, we shall have a better Uganda, where you find everybody is making a choice to go to a profession of his or her choice. Today, I am a teacher, but I cannot convince my children to, to go for teaching. If you go to any school uh, and you go to upper classes, the lower ones will enjoy seeing Dr. Annette and say, I want to be a teacher. But once they have reached these other levels and they understand what goes on and around, they will tell you, I cannot be a teacher because the profession as it is now is not attractive yeah. and we must solve that before we reach a point when we shall be touching here and there uh, and making matters worse so before we reach there we should plan ahead and make the teaching profession attractive so that we attract people who are naturally there are those who are naturally teachers, mm. but they may not go to the teaching profession because they also want to live and survive. Mm. But if the survival mechanism is very harsh, then 
they will not make that choice and will go for other choices. So I'm going to Carol on that, of continuing your point, what you mentioned there. Um, how do we attract the youth into joining this uh, profession in Uganda? Because you're passionate, you said you're going to transition, but you will still teach. So how can we attract <laughs> people, the youth, to actually have that uh, fire in them? Uh -huh. yeah. To get the heart color like us. Mm. Mm. So this goes right at inception of life. The messages we talk to our children when they are born is that they should be looking for maybe survival, they have to get money. But for me, the message I give to people is service, that you, you ought to do service. What is deep in your heart that you want to do? Whatever we do should start with service. And that is the message we need to give to this young person. But I cannot, even as I give service, I should disregard what Mr. Baguma has talked about, is that even when you are good and you want, even Caroline mm. wants to drive a Benz, as a teacher, and I pack it in the, in the school, and I say, well, our <laughs> professor has come in. Yes. <laughs> our professor has come in. Mm. Attractiveness comes with the, a cost at it. It comes with an attitude, first of all, and that's why I talked about the attitude from the inception that you love what you're doing. And usually when you do things out of love, they come out beautiful. And for us who have succeeded with the teaching, we've done things with passion and with love. That one, notwithstanding, what Mr. Baguma is moving is really an issue. Is that uh, I want us as a country to sit down and prioritize education. And when we prioritize, all countries that have succeeded, at one time we were together with Singapore. Mm. This year I visited Singapore out of wanting to know how they left us. And the, what I got to know is that the government sat down and said, how do we get out of where we are? It was a question which everybody was concerned about. And they said, let us get very, very strong, academically strong, but also passionate uh, citizens who love their country, but who also have brains. So they have two things. They have the aptitude, they have the attitude. And give them money to go abroad learn, but not only learn the knowledge in school, but learn everything around what makes this country develop. We are paying everything and we are going to pay these people well. So when they come back, they, we are signing an agreement that they as is come back and develop this country. So they took lawyers, they took teachers, they took doctors. <coughs> it's a combination of what makes a state. The army, not forgotten. And these young men went out and they came back. In Singapore is where you see everybody is proud to be a Singaporean. And the way they said is so attractive. The young, the aged, the, everybody is associated to this country because they planned out a strategy that worked. And in no time, Singapore has one of the best transport systems of the world. It doesn't even relate to US. I've been to the US, I've been to UK. There is no transport system or connectivity that is in Singapore. Because they went out with a vision, with a passion. We are not so limited in Uganda if we determine to do good to ourselves. It just requires us to sit and plan. Because we can't pretend we are moving in regard to education. There are many things that are stuck. There are many things and all of them are stuck around this unit of the teacher. The teacher is agonizing, and the teacher who is agonizing is the one at the reception where the human being is made. Because universities don't make the people. The people who make the people are the kindergarten teachers sure. and the primary school teachers, basic education. It makes you. When they leave you, for us, when, they, when you are trained so well and you are left at P4, you can read up to university with less support from a teacher because they founded you well. So the whole issue is that, as he said, we need to package this teacher and make the teacher attractive. I will say it that teachers don't have private life. They give all to their country. And if we want humans to come out well, the teacher to stay in school and look after the children whom the parents are abandoning at a very early age because they are working. 
We teachers are willing to sit with your children, look after them, and make good because our heart rejoices in the good that comes out of the child. We can't harm our own students. So if the country wants to move, they just have to put something around this teacher to do everything they can do. They are satisfied. They are well looked after because we can't go much to look after the gods. We have to tender to the children in a way of trying to to nurture them beyond education, to give them a hearing, to hear them read, to understand why they failed. I have to give time and quality time. So if we all are, are flying away to go and look for money, this child is left helpless. The mother is looking for money, the teacher is looking for money, the doctor is looking for money. Everybody is trying to make ends meet. We must sacrifice something to sit down this teacher and empower them and leave them to just develop the human resource. The human resource is going to revamp this country because they have the skills, they have the attitudes, they have the care and love inside them that the teacher has nurtured. Yeah. At the moment, the teachers are also on a frying agenda. They want to go and look after the chicken because they also have children. They want to go and do, so they have divided our attention. Mm -hmm. And yet making a child is something that takes a lot of time and a lot of skill and a lot of energy. Building human, human character is not a one day thing. It requires investment. Mm -hmm. It's not about people who are intelligent. We are building a human being, a person with character. And that's what is lacking in our education system because nobody is looking after that. All right. Um, Dr. Annette, what can government do to motivate and retain our teachers in the profession? Because you think uh, some people, young people don't want to become teachers. Uh, the general secretary said even his kids, uh, he cannot convince his kids to actually become teachers. What can we do to motivate but also retain? Um, there are a number of things that we can do. One thing I want to first say before I go to government mm. is that all of us have experience of the past generation. What made them different from the generation we are today and the one we are expecting tomorrow was that a child belonged to the community. And to me, I, I think we need to borrow that analogy and bring it to generation today and know that education is going to be made better if we all admire to have good education. Meaning that everybody must be prepared to work with the government to make sure that teachers are, uh, uh, they, they are retained in the system and they remain in their profession. And even the teachers will have their part to do. Uh, private sector needs to work with us because government supports them to get a number of things to put in education. We get the books, we get the services, we get all these things that support education. And for them to give back to government for having supported that business, they also need to come in and uh, support the government to make the education the, way, the one we want for the country that we need tomorrow. Uh, for example, my brother uh, Baguma has talked about to appreciate my teacher. There are many things we can do as a private sector to support government. Government, yes, has given salary, and we are saying that salary is not yet at the level where it is supposed to be. At the same time, we know that it is uh, on the table, on the table, table of government also to look at how salaries can be regulated at all levels to make sure that everybody feels good as he or she is doing his work. But before that one is done, there's something we can do today. There's something we can do tomorrow as we wait for the other day for the government. If we, private sector came in and said, yeah, in our community where we are, we know some teachers who have been coming to our place. We also know our children have been going in these schools and are being handled by the teachers. What is it that we can do? We see other countries for example, in this week of Appreciate My Teacher, private sector comes and gives rewards. Because I know, if, for example, we said we have gone to Kampara parents, 
there are very many people who are not government, but who can come in to support government to have those teachers at Kampala parents, at Nakasero, at, uh, at Chieta, to be happy. They can buy things and take them there. They can take messages. They can take some of these teachers for sabbatical holiday. We have uh, very many airline companies in this country. We have very many people who are involved. The big challenge that we have is that in our country, we keep on pointing. But one finger is pointing that side. How many are pointing on you? If we all made sure that these fingers are pointing to everyone around us and we complete the cycle, we would be good to go. So we need everybody to come in and support the government. And with us government, what we need to do is to make sure that the policies that have been in place are strengthened and they do the reason why they were put in place. Uh, for example, we are now coming up with a teacher incentive framework that is going to be disseminated to all stakeholders in education, whether they are education partners, whether they are um, uh, um, government workers, to look at how do you appreciate the person who is working hard. So that even the one who has been dodging know that he has an entry and when he does good work, he can be appreciated. But at the same time, I want to request that the people that are responsible for finalizing some of these decisions yeah. to remember that they are all where they are because of a teacher. And it. therefore, Sometimes I would be very happy if one said, I cannot eat today because I know there is a teacher who is not eating. <laughs> <laughs> but the bad thing that we, we, we don't have those people yet. Mm. We don't have people who come and say, they cannot add me salary before they add the teachers, uh, the teachers today, with their start. salary. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's my call that we work together and there is government per se alone. We are mm. all government. Yeah. Let's work together and strengthen education mm. and we shall be proud of this mm. part of Africa. Uh, going back on the same question, Mr. Baguma, since you carry, uh, uh, you, you speak for the union. Yes. Um, what can government actually do to motivate and retain uh, teachers in the, in the profession? Um, first of all is to invest in education. When we talk about motivating the teacher, we are looking at the teacher's welfare, mm -hmm. but also the environment where the teacher works. Mm -hmm. Because um, the, the, the environment needs to be well resourced, because even if you work on the teacher's side and leave the other side, the teacher will be there, but without support, and therefore may not do much. So. Government needs to invest in education, work on the teacher's welfare. We wouldn't, if you find teachers going to school, instead of concentrating on what has taken them, they are talking about salary. Mm -hmm. They are talking about unpaid areas. Mm -hmm. They are talking about heavy workload. Now, that makes a diversion. A teacher should be psychologically prepared and comes to, to, to the school setup, the school which is well resourced, and then the teacher starts straight away on what he or she has prepared. But when we find the teachers are concentrating, you have left your children at home who have not gone to school, but you have come to teach others children. Now, where will you get the concentration? You have left home, there is nothing to eat at home for your family. It means you are divided. You are thinking of how to get what to feed your family and teaching. Then you will have scenarios where you find a teacher is in a school X. The learners do not have a midday meal. The teacher does not have a midday meal. So you have a, ha um, a hungry teacher teaching hungry children. <laughs> now, uh, and you know what it means? The body reacts. When it is time for lunch, it will give you signals. 
uh, and you start yawning. Now, you imagine a situation oh. where the learners are yawning yeah, the and the teacher is, yeah. is also <laughs> yawning. But the teacher must make the best out of these learners. Mm. So, government needs to invest in education so that we have better welfare for the teachers and without dividing the teachers. You see, the moment you divide the teachers, right now I have, I, I had Makerere University is going on strike because of harmonization of salary. Mm. The, the moment you bring in these um, factions. factions and the discrimination, that means you have killed the morale. Because it takes much of their time saying, why is Carol earning this? And yet, me and Carol were in the same college, and we came out as teachers. Now Carol earns five times than I do, and Carol teaches for 40 minutes. I also meet Carol going out, and I am going in for 40 minutes. Even if you are godly, that does not get out of your mind, and therefore it will affect your performance and nobody should should really lie on that so for us to attract not only attracting actually but to attract and retain those who are there we need to make sure that a teacher is adequately facilitated the teacher is well trained with these refresher courses the continuous professional development the teacher is given an environment that is really appreciative because amidst all these, all the classes go to the teacher. The parents have not done their part. The community has not done their part. But at the end of the day, when results come, the other teacher I told you who is teaching 300 learners in one class, they are saying, what have you been doing? The resources are not available. Right now as we talk, schools opened for third term some weeks back. But some schools, government schools have not received capitation grant. And His Excellency is saying, I don't want my parents and guardians to pay those in UPE and USE. But also the capitation grant is not there. Now, I want you to imagine what is taking place. Yeah. It is only pretending that something is being done when in actual sense it is not being done. So we need to be conscious about what we want as a country. Loving your country. Singapore reaching that level of saying, let us look for people who should go out and take their time. Let us pay them well so that they concentrate on what has taken them. Mm -hmm. Because once your welfare is catered for, you concentrate on what you are supposed mm -hmm. to do. And that made Singapore to be what it is because they realized there was something missing. And therefore, when we are talking about some of these things, nobody should misinterpret us and say you, they don't like their country. We love our country more than those who pretend to love it more than others. But where there is a gap, it needs to come out clearly yeah. so that together we find a solution and we live in a better Uganda than it is today. So our education needs a lot of thinking and rethinking so that we prepare our learners who are there today and tomorrow who will make Uganda a better place to live in. Speaking of Uganda, um, I would like to go to Carol first, then you, and then uh, Anne. How can we achieve quality education uh, for all in Uganda? Yeah, thank you so much. Because with the yawning and the double the yawning, yawning. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> thank you so much for that question. The word quality is quite heavy, even for us as we pursue anybody, any business partner. 
anybody pursuing business, MTN or whatever, achieving quality is takes you sleepless nights. Mm. And attaining it requires concerted efforts. Mm. As he said, building from what he has said. It is not only the teacher who makes quality be quality. When you look at uh, education, they talk about five elements that contribute to quality. Uh, the first one, of course, the teacher takes a big percentage mm -hmm. because they say the teacher with or without a classroom can teach and impact on the learner. That mm -hmm. is true. But it could still be much better when the learning environment has the resources that the teacher needs to utilize and demonstrate learning in its reality. So it becomes on, on top of the teacher, there is the learning environment which needs to be equipped. I have to be sincere for primary education. The government has really made the effort to give books. And then sometimes the teachers are the ones not using them. But for the books, they are there. But then the furniture, uh, many children are seen sitting on the floor. And so it affects their writing. So all these elements of environment come back to us, parents and the the government. Uh, so the other player is the parent. The parent, when UPE came, they took a back seat. Because of political messages uh, that a government is able to do everything, which I think the government, I'm requesting our dear president and all people, ministers concerned, to rethink this. I don't think that with Uganda's population, we always, for us, we speak for government, but we normally say our government is constrained mm -hmm. because of the many children and many others. So donors can come in to support and do. Let us accept that we can do this much, but then the other much the parent has a responsibility to do. If the parent gets back to their position and they work to feed their children, some of them are just being adamant because they hear political people speaking for them. And I think that's where deception comes in. Many of the other DCs are deceiving and cheating these parents. That they, the, the government will cook for the children, give them everything. Now the two are yearning. When parents are well, the parents are hungry, the teacher is hungry, the children are hungry. Where children are eating, even in government schools, it much, it's much better. The children are more stable. The teachers are more calm and more committed. And the so okay. we would like the parent to get back to their position of feeding the children and of trying to provide the resources like the books and whatever. Because government can do something, but they can't do everything. Mm -hmm. No government will give everything entirely for education, except when the children are very few. But Uganda has so many children, so let us accept. <laughs> Let us accept that Uganda's children are quite many and we accept to be supported. Uh, Dr. Annette has already talked about the other partners, the players. Mm -hmm. We have um, the business community. We have seen countries that contribute only 1% to education, only 1% of their income to education, and it makes the whole magic. So we, if government opened up for this, I know there are many partners out there who would love to help teaching, who would like to improve education by just raising 1% into the education bag. And then the other is the political wing. Policies, the policy makers, all these are stakeholders. So if our policies are to work, we must walk down the step-by-step -step issues that make those policies speak in reality. Because writing a good policy, as he said earlier, without being realistic to the very uh, issues that will make it fail or work, will still make it a paper. So we need to work together with the policy politicians, with the business entity, with the teacher, with the parent, our education partners, and they all to come into the game of education. Then we shall attain equality. All right. Yes. Um, Dr. Annette, in a few words, how can we attain uh, Uganda? You cannot have good quality education. It's my prayer that we all change our attitude, mm -hmm. the way we look at business. All the stakeholders that we have get involved. Uh, even, the right, even right from the teacher himself or herself, we all change our attitude, love our work, and the people out there love the work we do 
the government puts education as first since we have already seen and we all know that it is the key to the door that takes us to the best things for the country. Um, the little money that we have, we use it effectively and make sure that we have uh, quality uh, uh, against quantity. People are saying we have very few teachers and uh, others are saying we have reduced the enrollment but for me I think let's all of us together look at quality and when we have quality teachers and they know what to do, they know how to do it. I have seen that we, we, we when you focus on um, strategies that can help you to handle a big class, you can handle it when you are one and handle them very well. So when this teacher is motivated and is equipped with the strategies that can help him to handle very well a big class and produce a desired graduate, then we shall be able to improve our quality of education in this country. Oh, thank you very much, Dr. Annette. So as we wrap up, I wanted every one of you to actually give us one parting shot, one key message for every teacher who is out there. You also do actually thank your teachers because you also had yeah. teachers before. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll start with, uh, I'll start with Carol, then I guess <laughs> ladies first. Thank you so much for yeah. giving me the opportunity mm. to thank my teachers. Mm. I can't mention there are many, yeah. but I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to you teachers who have made me. Mm. Most important, the teachers who taught me in the primary school, many of whom I don't see these days, and the teachers who made me uh, a tutor, a teacher, educator, Chambogo University, I have done most of my higher education with you. Mm -hmm. I salute you all, my lecturers who are there, and I'm working with you. Mm -hmm. Others have retired, the Dr. Bryos, Mani, and all that. I thank you most sincerely for what you did for us. Mm -hmm. And now, the message to my fellow teachers is where I've chosen to send my message. Be courageous. Be strong. Uh, iron is sharpened by fire. And uh, if you want to make a mark, to be a hero as a teacher, because heroes are not only warriors, the army men are not going to come and fight illiteracy. It is you and I who are supposed to continue in this battle of fighting illiteracy and of nurturing the, 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 the young people of this state. So don't lose heart. Just sharpen your soul. Get into the, the work every day. Remember those kids that are waiting for you out there in the classroom, the angels, the just one, that smiling teacher, and leave your baggage at the door. Enter and greet them with a smile. And continue nurturing. Remember, in Uganda we say, it is us, we can also kill our profession. Yeah. Just dress smartly and do what it takes to be that teacher that is going to contribute a change in your appearance, in your symbolism, where you eat, what you do, what you buy, and your drop matters a lot. <laughs> Simple, but nice. So continue and awaken your energy in a positive energy mm -hmm. to continue teaching. We love you and we thank you for what you do for the state. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Um, Dr. Annette, and then we'll be last with uh, Dr. Wow, Robert. thank you very much. Uh, all those people that have put a lot of uh, if it was to make me what I am, from the lowest to the highest, I salute you. Um, I am grateful I have moved slowly but sure <laughs> from the lowest to the apex. And if there were no teachers, I wouldn't reach here. And I salute each and everybody that put a minute in that. And I want to leave teachers with a message from Maria Montofen. Uh, she says, if you don't put, life is useless if you don't make sure that you put a smile on someone's face. And that's the work of a teacher. Please keep it up. Whether people don't look at you, for you, make it a point to make sure that you put a smile on someone's face every day. Mm. Happy Teacher's Day, and I wish you all the best, and may God continue protecting you, because whenever you do good, God will be there for you. And may everybody who has a hand in making you happy do it. All, right, thank All you. the best. And uh, finally, Dr. Oh, are you a doctor? Right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um, first of all, I want to 
appreciate my teachers. From primary, I didn't have the opportunity to join pre-primary. <laughs> From primary up to now, I really appreciate them because they made me what I am. Teachers are unsung heroes. They do a lot with limited or no recognition. Right now as we talk, we have rewards and sanctions committees at the ministry, at the local governments. But every time these committees sit, they are sanctioning. They are one-eyed. Every time they go to the field, they only look for those who have done wrong, and they forget that they are those who, are done, who have done exceedingly well. Recognizing teachers and rewarding teachers is part of solving the problem. I want to implore. When we had COVID-19 lockdown and school closures, the parents accepted that the learners are better and safe when in school in the hands of teachers than when they are at home with their parents. The writing was on the wall. And at the time the schools were reopened, every parent had given up and they were only singing, when are schools <laughs> opening, when are schools <laughs> opening. <laughs> They had failed completely to manage their own children. And therefore, when we are talking about the teacher, that is the person we are talking about. And everybody should look at the teacher with the passion they deserve. Teachers remain human beings. They like the work. They want to do the work. But the pressures push them to divide their time into so many things. And that affects the learning outcomes. And therefore, the core is, let us give time to listen to the teachers' voices, because there is nothing for teachers without the teachers. The teachers play a key role. And when we talk about education, the central point is the teacher. Tomorrow is World Teachers' Day. I want to invite all stakeholders in the whole country because as Uganda National Teachers Union, we have organized celebrations in the entire country in every local government. The national celebrations were postponed to 19th because that is when our designated chief guest, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, We'll have time, and that is when we shall go to Kororo to celebrate the national event. But as of tomorrow, as Uganda National Teachers Union, we invite all stakeholders to come to our designated venues in all local governments in the country to celebrate the effort, the contribution the teachers have made in developing our beautiful country. We cannot make it continue to be referred to as the power of Africa unless we prioritize education. And we can only prioritize education by increasing investment in education. All right, thank you very much. Thank you all for coming through today. I've learned a lot. There's so much to talk about. Probably off air for me, I'll get the opportunity to actually uh, get to learn more because uh, Learning never ends. But remember, you too can actually make that phone call. Call that teacher and be like, you know what, you helped me out. There's that special teacher I know you remember from primary, from uh, secondary, and then from university. Just tell them thank you. And that's it. It means a lot. But thank you very much for also tuning in and waiting for all these hours and actually listening in. And uh, continue watching NBS. Have a good day. For 15 years, Lake Victoria Serena Golf Resort and Spa has been curled up in the beauty that surrounds the pristine waters around Africa's largest lake. 
plunge yourself in the tranquil surrounding with available amenities including our enchanting PGA golf course which will enable you to experience the premier golfing location in the country, a gourmet dining experience at our marina restaurant, unmatched comfort with an intoxicating